Yo, yo, Josh, yo. So for the last month, I've been secretly shooting primetime television with this camera, and the video quality is amazing. In some cases, it's actually better than the industry standard, the Canon C300 Mark II. Today, we're doing a detour for my normal creative projects, and we're taking a crash course on the Sony a7 III, the menu, the hidden features, and assigning custom buttons to the most helpful tools that I use on set. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, yeah. If I go a little fast or you get lost, I left step-by-step -step instructions in the description below along with the timestamp. Okay, so fresh out of the box, switch the dial into movie mode. Most of the changes that we make are only gonna be in effect when the dial is in movie mode. I hit menu, scroll over to exposure mode, change this to manual exposure. This is gonna give you full control over your aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. Then we're gonna initiate XABC 4K, 24P, at 100 megabits per second. This is gonna be the highest quality 4K you can get. Next, we're gonna go down to SQ settings. This is your slow-mo. This can shoot 120 frames per second slow-mo and stretch it out and conform it into your 24P timeline. We're gonna change this to 24P. Next, we're gonna go to autofocus drive. We're gonna change this to fast. The autofocus is blazing fast on this thing. And we're gonna do the autofocus track sensor we're gonna put that to responsive. Next, we're gonna to go to audio recording level. Set this down around seven. I shoot on one of these. This is a Rode VideoMic Pro. Use the power of the mic to do the lifting for you. That's generally how you get the cleanest sound. We're gonna set it to zero. Our audio levels will be at seven. Movie with shutter, we're gonna turn that on. Enables recording with your trigger finger. That will also enable it to be triggered by remote or shutter release. All right, next, we're gonna go over to Finder Monitor Display. Right now it's set on auto, and this is a very annoying thing that... Stop it, stop, what are you doing? Stop it, pick a spot, good boy. Almost as annoying as my dog. When you put your finger up, it, it shuts off the monitor. So we're gonna change this to monitor manual. That way it doesn't do it. Custom keys. This camera does not come alive without all these custom keys. You got C1, C2, C3, C4. Then these can be programmed. The side buttons can be programmed. It, there's a lot of stuff that you can do. We're only customizing this for video mode. So we're gonna go ahead and go here. Control wheel, we're gonna put that not set. Control wheel is this dial right here. It, you'll bump it all the time. Custom button one, which is up here, is gonna be our picture profile. There we go. So if you wanna maximize this camera's dynamic range, you're gonna go to picture profile seven, and this is gonna give you 15 stops of dynamic range if you expose it correctly. Next, we're gonna go custom button two. We're gonna change this to white balance. Very important to nail your white balance. Custom button three. We're gonna change this to APC Super 35 crop mode. This is a great little hack. Keep it as a toggle switch. If I need to zoom in on something, I can just do that real quick. Custom button four, this little trash can down here. We're gonna set this to focus mode. I shoot a lot of different types of lenses. Some of them have switches here to turn the focus mode on and off. Some of them don't. So this is a very helpful tool for me to quickly change it from autofocus continuous to manual focus. Next, multi select center button. This is gonna be our audio levels that we set. Feel this button right here, it's kind of prickly. So it kind of reminds me of like the spikes in audio levels. That's how I always remember. If I'm not shooting with the mic, I can just kind of crank that back up to 26 and boom, we're done. One of the benefits of keeping it in movie mode is you got the levels all the time. So that actually looks about right. Center button, we're gonna change this to Focus magnifier, this has got a four times focus magnifier. This is super helpful when you're shooting on a manual lens and you're not sure if you're in focus or not. You just hit the center button now twice. It gives you a little extra reach. And then you hit it one more time to cancel it out. The left button, we're gonna do peaking display select, letting you know if it's in focus. And now you see this, those things in white, super helpful. We're gonna go to peaking color, change that to red. It is red. Back to custom keys. We're gonna go to the right button. It says follow custom, whatever the picture custom settings are, it's gonna follow that. I'm actually gonna change this to what it normally is, which is ISO. 
So if I ever go in and change it in the photo settings that it doesn't also automatically change it in the video for me. Down button, we are gonna change this to monitor brightness. So from regular mode to sunny weather mode. The only thing is that it drains a lot of batteries. So for the regular mode, I'm actually gonna keep it at negative two. I can quickly just toggle it on and off if I want. AEL button, we are gonna change this to center lock on autofocus. This is one of the coolest functions that this camera has. Now is a good time to enable the touch screen. We have that, so let's skip ahead to touch operation, turn that on. Now, when we go into this center lock on, we can actually just select wherever we want and it will track it, see? Such a freaking game changer. Next, we're gonna go down a focus area and change to expand flexible spot. Next, autofocus on, change this to gamma display assist. When you're shooting S-Log2, everything's very flat. There's no contrast. It's hard to find focus. It's hard to see if your exposure is correct. Gamma display will actually imitate Rec. 709 gamma and give you a correct exposure reading contrast if you're shooting without a monitor that has these kind of LUTs that are programmed in there. All right, next, focus hold button. This is only available if you have a button on the side of your lens, not all lenses have this. This one I'm actually gonna set as center lock on autofocus as well, and that's gonna free up this button for me to program something else like zebras. And there we go. So now we got zebras, pretty damn good. All right, next function menu setup. The function button right here holds a bunch of stuff that you don't really use and it's confusing. So we're gonna get rid of all of that stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and set this to not set. We are gonna set the middle ones. Function lower three, let's change that to our S and Q frame rate. This is a super fast way to switch from our 120 frames per second slow-mo to time-lapse. Flip the dial to S and Q, then hit your function, 120 frames per second, go to four frames per second, and boom, there you go. All right, function lower four, we're gonna change this to marker display. So if you want a super cinematic aspect ratio or center crosshairs, then you can toggle the guide frames on or off. Find all the other aspect ratio and options in marker display settings. All right. All right, and the last one, lower function five, we're gonna change this to prioritize record media. This is a really quick way to switch from card one to card two. I shoot a lot of interviews and B-roll, and this is a way for me to keep things separate and organized. Okay, dial setup, we're actually gonna switch this, we're reversing these top two dials right here, and it's making this one your aperture, which you're gonna use a lot more than shutter speed. Power saver start time, we're gonna set this to five minutes. Time code settings, I already set this up for time code. Uh, if you guys wanna see how to do this exactly, I did a video just on time code alone and it's linked in at the end. Record media settings, we're gonna change this to auto switch on. It fills up, it'll automatically switch from card number one to card number two. Last one on here is my menu. There really is only one item on here that you're gonna need and that's format. Everything else, I have assigned a button for it. Boom, this thing is ready to go. These custom buttons work for me. I strongly encourage you guys to test it out, experiment. The only way you're gonna get good at something is by trying things out and failing miserably. If you guys find this helpful, blow me up on that little like button right there or jump on the bandwagon if you haven't done so already. Anyway, this is Josh Yo saying thank you very much. Stay creative, now go make some art.